Nandini with her role model, her poet, her poet philosopher and guide, Professor Jayatam Mahapatra. I'm so happy to be in his house. And we both are so happy to be holding the books. I'm holding the book. Reading Jayatam Mahapatra, which was published this year from Black Eagle Publications, Mahapatra. And this remained as Amazon's best selling book for quite some time. And then I'm so happy that Sir is holding my poetry book, A Song, Half and Half, which is again published from Black Eagle Publications in America. Thank you, Satya Patnaik Sir and Black Eagle Publications for publishing these two very important books and giving such exposure to both the books that they still remain as Amazon's best-selling books since quite a few weeks. We are very happy and proud of you. And now, I would request sir to say a few words and then sir will be leading thank one, you. one of my Thank days. you, thank you Nandini yes. that you are here. I am so happy that we could be together for a long time. Nandini, or Dr. Nandini Tao to many of us, to most of us, is one of the loveliest persons I have met. <laughs> I remember a long time back, years ago, when I had been to Varampur and I presented her, I was the man who presented her with the gold medal. She had so, so, so obviously uh, been awarded by the university. I was really happy to be there, happy also today, and to read first a poem by Nandi. Let me go over to a poem which is titled A Welcome World. It's all love. And love, I suppose, is what makes us go, what makes us today, today. We don't think about tomorrow. It's only today that matters to us. A Welcome World. Loving you is like going to the wall. I know I'll never come back the same. I will either come home with broken limbs or they send me dead. I am one, sorry, I am fine with this welcome world, my comrade, because I didn't pursue love just to be in love. I wanted for the right man for ages rather than waiting for him or waiting for true love from an erroneous one. Neither you have any negotiable alternatives. Loving me is your living, living as in breathing. I don't want to make peace with life. If peace is an alternative to this love, to this welcome world, my ethics of war is a different flow. The penalty of ethics to war is to help us to see the alteration between right and wrong and to underwrite strategic dialogues on our public and distinct accomplishment. Peace is not a lack of conflict, but the aptitude to beneficially receive war, resolve war, as a momentous occasion for evolution and greater empathetic action. Peace has the potential to diagnose, honor, and unlearn. Peace is a responsibility not to impair anyone, but it's a provider. It's a provider or provender. It's a provender, I'm sorry. Big question is, is war imperative to bring peace? Peace never means no contestation, no trouble. It just means alliance. My war is not impartial commotion, brutality, and an epidemic in the idea of human rights. War is obligatory before peace. Only the degree diverges. Let war break the crooked silence. 
when the status quo goes out of your stat. And someone hits your human rights, war is required. I agree, love, the better you sweat in peace, the lesser you bleed in war. Trust me, to be systematized for war is the modest scheme of conserving peace. I am not a bird born in the cage. To me, hence, crying isn't an ailment. Love, can this war of freedom be a new beginning, a fresh start? Thank you, Nandini. Thank you so much. I'm so honored that you read one of my poems for the book. And made mistakes while reading your poem. No, 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 I'm so sorry. Not at all, not at all. It was a pleasant poem. Thank you. And now, will you allow me to read a few lines sure. from this book? Yeah. Read it, yeah, just the one part. I did this book with yeah. a lot of love. Yeah, I know. You know. The poems you have selected in this book are really what I would have done. Okay. Yeah, that's saying what I wanted to say. Okay. And you have, you have put your heart, your love into making this book. And I thank you. I'm grateful, really grateful to you okay. for all the pain you took. Thank you, Nadi. Thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure to read all your poems and select them. And also this photograph with sir and me, we are sitting yeah. together. Yeah, that's a beautiful picture. It's a beautiful picture. photo. It was yeah. his selection, of course. He selected this photo and he wanted me to put it here. Yes. And uh, of course, this page was suggested by the publisher, Satya Patanti. And uh, I wrote a long introduction of 98 pages <coughs> to, to the book. And uh, I'll be reading only the first two pages, which are a bit of personal. And the academic part, I leave it to the readers to, to read and then to understand. Uh, a critical introduction by Nandani Sahu. To the book. Yes. I have to, I certainly have to, share specifics of a few emotional moments I spent with poet Padmasri Jayanta Mahapatra before I get into my serious academic discourse and engagement as a Jayanta Mahapatra scholar. I met the Jayanta Mahapatra in 1995 for the first time in the PG department of English, Barnapur University, Odisha, when he had come to our department to award the gold medal to the student with highest percentage, the Dorothy Dearings Award. And that year, Fortunately, I was the awardee. I looked mesmerized at his calm, composed face without a blink, like I'm looking now. Thank you. Touched his feet on the dais. He blessed me generously. The same year, I stood first in All India Poetry Competition, which he had noticed in the newspapers, and he did not forget to congratulate me in front of everyone. You are a small town, simple girl, Nandini, a serious academic, and you will see the world. He said that. My happiness knew no bounds. And then and there, I decided that I would do my PhD on his poetry. And the next day, I requested my supervisor, late Professor Nirandhan Mohanty, to allow me to submit a synopsis on Jayanta Mahapatra's poetry, which he very kindly facilitated. The rest is history. Today, I can proudly say that I am a Jayanta Mahapatra scholar. During my PhD courses, I could never meet Jayanta sir, and I only took a couple of telephonic interviews with him. After PhD, I joined ISCR and then IGNO as a professor. I guided many research scholars to write their PhD thesis on Mahapatra. I introduced his poetry in many a syllabus of the universities. I never forgot to mention him in my classes as if it were my moral responsibility. Over the years, my personal relationship with Sir has evolved from a student, researcher, to a daughter. Even he says that I am his granddaughter, to now almost his mother. <laughs> Since last few, few years, I treat him like my child. I pamper him. I reproach him if he is careless with health or eating on time. I protect him. I love him. Sir gets teary-eyed every time I call him to ask after his health and well-being. Three years ago, I visited him at Tinikunia Bagicha with Bopo Sir, Professor Boparanjan Mishra. He was overwhelmed to see me. I had taken a bunch of silver lemon chilies, Nimbu Mirchi for him. He asked, why did you bring this Nandini, though they are so beautiful and artistic? <coughs> I said, see, you are so handsome. 
no one should cast an evil eye on you this will protect you <laughs> he was beaming with happiness and asked sarojini devi his her domestic help to help the nimbu to hang the nimbu mirchi at the front door immediately he is such it's still there it's still there at the front door yes a simple man a molten man a pure soul a jubilant person with a child like virtue he simply trusts i remember before covid days i was supposed to share the days with him in a literature festival sir was hungry but most of his fans were busy clicking selfies with him to post on social media i asked him to eat before the session but the chinese food elaborately served on the menu wasn't fit for a person of his age i requested the organizers to arrange fruit salads for and or some simple dal rice <coughs> but as expected people were very busy i left my session went to one of my teacher's places and bought a piece of podo pitha it is it's fermented rice black gram cake with grated coconut by the time i came the session was over and he was still sitting hungry seeing the podo pitha he was teary eyed again while eating the cake he told me that this is his favorite dish yes it's still is yes i can go on and on talking about how much he loves me and my son parthi sarathi this year when he got covid i was really shattered i myself was on the covid bed in delhi i called up every possible source in odisha to arrange support for sir a couple of my poet friends coordinated and sir was in safe hands he recovered bounced back with his energy and good health i apprehend no i'm convinced a jain mahapatra is born only once in millenniums to enrich the civilization with poetry and limpidness this book has always been at the back of my mind for last two decades and i unsuccessfully attempted a couple of times to make a complete jayanta mahapatra reader but everything happens when time is right for it and everything happens for good that is why mr satyapatnaik the erudite publisher of black eagle publications facilitated me to do this book at this point of my life when there is an emotive helix and a mellifluous ringlet flowing melodiously between jayanta sir and me in fact the entire indian english literary fraternity loves him and is indebted to him for creating the historiography of indian english poetry where we safely cozily comfortably belong this book is the tribute has respect from a young poet to a senior poet from a devotee to divinity incarnate idol embodied this book is my admiration highest respect to my rich pedigree to the historiography of indian english poetry i belong to shaped by the doyen like poet jayanta mahapatra thank you